Good evening and welcome to Money Magazine. I'm Alan Bruknia. Now the price of food has been skyrocketing recently, with bad weather in many areas of the world affecting crop output that's led to food shortages in some countries. But it's a lot more than the weather that's causing the price increases. Eric Ju is a rice importer who buys his stock from Thailand. That's where more than 90% of the rice in Hong Kong stores comes from. He says over the past two years, the price he's been paying has been going up steadily. And lately, it's been skyrocketing. The quotation price is like more than double since last December, uh, last year. But Ju says he's not able to pass on the full cost of his increases to his customers. We are earning less than uh, what, what we expected because the competition in Hong Kong local market is still very strong. A report released last week by the Consumer Council shows that rice prices in Hong Kong were up 12.7 percent last year and the price increases are expected to accelerate this year. We are trying to sell at the best price to our customers but still the customers are not happy with the situation. We are just trying to um, absorb as much as we can, but the, the price from Thailand is still going up. According to figures from the World Bank, overall food prices have almost doubled in the last three years, rising 83 percent. Wheat prices are up 181 percent over the same period. Rice prices went up 70 percent just in the last year. And the price increases are accelerating, with wheat going up 18% in the first three months of this year, rice 54%. Last week, the International Monetary Fund warned that rising food prices are a threat to the world's economic and political stability. If food prices go on as they are today, then the consequences on the population in a large set of countries will be terrific. Hundreds of thousands of people will be starving. Children will suffer from bad nutrition with consequences all over their life. And moreover, the consequences will be such that uh, disruption may occur in the economic environment. Already, social unrest and in some cases riots have erupted in some African countries, Bangladesh, the Philippines and Indonesia. The problem has probably been rising for several years now. It's just now coming to the front and you're seeing a particular spike and that's causing uh, riots. McIntosh is the general manager at National Australia Bank, the country's biggest agricultural bank. Australia saw its wheat production cut in half because of drought last year. Bad weather in Europe and Asia has also cut into the world's food supplies. A typhoon going through Bangladesh and uh, their uh, rice crops have been reduced. Um, the weather hasn't supported bumper yields that we would have liked, and, but Chinese uh, rice will probably be delayed because of the big freeze they had there um, earlier in the year. But McIntosh says it's much more than that that's driving up food prices. In some developing economies, such as China, the middle class is growing and the more affluent people tend to eat more meat, thus cutting into the grain supply. And it takes 700 calories of grain to produce 100 calories of beef. So that's not the most efficient way uh, to, to use your grain stocks. On the supply side, you're seeing uh, some government policies having an effect as well, where you're seeing uh, corn used for biofuels. In US and EU, they're pushing for more biofuels. Then what happened in developing countries? Because they see there's a demand for corn in, uh, in US. And then they produce more corn and then export it to the countries. Yeah. And then the thing is, they need their own food. So says that while clean burning fuel is desirable, some studies show biofuel has minimal positive impact on the environment and it's not worth the trade-off. There are different ways of producing the biofuels. You could use non-food stuff. Such as corn stalks without using the edible portion of the plant, or recycled cooking oil, waste animal fat, and grease trap waste from restaurants. Another thing driving up the cost of food is the price of crude oil. With oil going to $100 a barrel, that affects the input costs to a farmer. It's very expensive to plough the fields, to then harvest the grain and then truck the grain to, 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 to the depot. 
McIntosh says there could be some relief in the next few months. Asia is about to come into the first rice harvest of the year and so there will be a lot of rice coming onto the market so we'd expect to see rice prices in Asia stabilize a little bit. Meanwhile, Eric Ju says he has enough rice stock now to last through the second quarter of this year, but he isn't sure what he's going to do for the following three months. While he'd welcome reduced prices, he says that because he usually signs contracts one or two months in advance for rice deliveries, it creates a dilemma for him. Do I want to gamble to, to buy at a much higher price now to, for the supply at the third quarter? The local importer also afraid that if the price just come down after two months, then if we contract it at high price, we may have much losses. Before, when you know the price is really going up, you are more willing to buy. But now it's like really a bet. The latest round of results announcements made by listed companies in recent weeks has reflected the economic boom in China in 2007. But reporter Michael Wong finds there are signs of weakness in certain sectors. Hundreds of Hong Kong listed companies have reported results over the past two months. Among them, banks and insurance firms have been the focus of attention as investors gauge the impacts the subprime mortgage crisis had on the financial sector. Global giant HSBC recorded a 21% year-on-year rise in profit to $149 billion. Its subsidiary, Hansen Bank, improved 51% to $18 billion. For HSBC, uh, the result is much better than the expectation. Uh, the major reason is that uh, they have already provided sufficient provision or uh, write down in their investment uh, in 2006 and 2007. Major mainland banks surged at least 31% in 2007 earnings from the year before. Castapan says most banks saw good investment income amid positive market sentiment last year. The bull market in China uh, seems to be over, and maybe this year, 2008, uh, will not do as bad as uh, 2007, especially the China economic growth may be slowed down. The investment income-based insurance sector performed well, although some companies did fall short of expectations. Market leader China Life posted a 94% hike in earnings. It was followed by Ping An and PICC Property and Casualty. The results of PICC is more indicative of the keen competition in China, so sometimes they have to lower the premium to boost sales, and this would affect the profitability. Shareholders of China Life have to brace themselves for smaller profit growth in future. The chief investment officers of uh, China Life has, uh, has also indicated that going forward they would uh, set aside more of the assets to be invested in uh, fixed income rather than the equities market. We can expect a lower investment return uh, for the coming two years. Among property counters, Sinoland's net profit surged 211%. Henderson Land reported a handsome 142% rise. Chang Kong's earnings jumped 53% and Sun Hong Kai Properties' profit rose by a relatively modest 24%. They have pretty good results uh, in investment income. Uh, but for the core uh, business, uh, most of them just uh, in line with the uh, market expectation. 我們獨資或者合資的形式分別在香港、上海和廣州增購了六幅優質的地皮 Property developers who have uh, already invested quite a lot of their funds in China may have a good result continuously in the coming years. Small developer KWA International reported a net profit of $2.4 billion. That was a leap of 967%. But analysts warn not every investment in mainland China provides high yield. Despite rising global crude oil prices, PetroChina, Sinopec and Sinop all manage only